Okay, so I'm just gonna take a couple minutes and then we'll take the break and get into the discussion. Um, but I want to um, sort of, I gave you the context, Dan got sort of down into the weeds and I sort of wanna put sort of three big ideas on the table before we take the break that we can, that we can also talk about. Um, Dan mentioned and I agree that, you know, when you make decisions about transportation, you, you literally make decisions that, that can be pertinent for, um, for, a, uh, for decades, for a century. Uh, and I completely agree with Dan, for example. You know, if, if, if all Governor Patrick did in eight years was to acquire the rights of way from CSX and move the post office so that we could expand South Station, that would be a big legacy. That would be huge because it's the beginning of the asset base for the 21st century you know, transportation system. If, if you've ever had the pleasure of having of listening to Governor Dukakis you know, talk about transportation issues, he bought the commuter rail system that currently carries 60,000 people a day into Boston for $35 million because no one wanted it. And had he not done that, the entire shape of Eastern Massachusetts and, and Metropolitan Boston would be would be different if we couldn't continue to move those workers into the Boston and the financial district. Things would have changed, and you know, the numbers were thrown around. That was chump change, but at the time there was no money. But he made the decision that it had to be done. And Governor Patrick has said the same thing about South Station. I have no idea where the money will come from. We need it. So, so there are big decisions to be made, and I want to talk about three of them that I think are overarching over all of this, the very important things Dan talked about. One is this issue of investment. Um, we have to find a way to invest more in the system, and we have to walk and chew gum at the same time, right? That's what my little <laughs> illustration is for, because I think that is the problem. We keep having this debate about whether we're gonna fix the system, expand the system, run it well. We actually have to do all of them. We have no choice, okay? We have to operate the system we have, we need to maintain the system we have. I don't like fix it first because fix it, if you, if you just rebuild the system the way it was 50 years ago, then we've got a great 20th century transportation system 20 years from now after we spent 600 or a million a year. I want to have a great 21st century system. The Longfellow is actually the best example. We can make the Longfellow be what it was in 1930 or we can ask ourselves the question, how do we want to use the Longfellow? Do we want more space for bicycles and pedestrians in the red line, less space for cars? So part of fix it first has come to mean just build it exactly the way it is because it's faster and it's easier, but there's an opportunity lost. When we're done investing literally billions of dollars in our assets to get them back to the place that they should have been all along, I want them to work for the 21st century. So, so I want to make it better, not just fix it first. And as Dan hinted, and as I'm, I think, probably well known for in Massachusetts, I am one of those voices that continues to say, as big as the hole that we have dug for ourselves are, there are strategic investments in additional capacity on the road system, and particularly in the transit system, that we need to find a way to make. And we may not be able to make them this year, and we may not be able to make them in the next four years while Governor Patrick is in office. But sometime over the next 10, 20, or 30 years, we need to find a way to make those investments. Because if the people who came before us hadn't built the MBTA in the 19th century, hadn't bought the commuter rail system, hadn't built the Massachusetts Turnpike and then extended it past 128 and into the city of Boston, we would not have the Commonwealth we have today. We wouldn't have the economy. Had we owe that to the people who are coming after us. Which brings me to the second issue. We have no idea what a 21st century transportation system for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts looks like. Completely clueless. We are so overwhelmed with the set of issues that Dan just presented, which every one of which is legitimate, and there are dozens of others that we haven't even put on the screen tonight, that we, we have lost the ability to take a step back and said, what is the big picture over decades? And we did that once in this state. 40 years ago, this year, 40 years ago, Frank Sarkovic, <coughs> on February 1st, 1970, stood up at a microphone and said something that no politician in the United States of America would ever open a press conference with today. He opened the press conference 
on the question of whether he was going to build that highway system, which would go right through this campus that we are standing on now. And he opened the press conference and he said, I was wrong. And he stopped the highway construction and he set in motion something called the Boston Transportation Planning Review, which basically came up with everything from the third tunnel to the airport, the depression of the central artery, the decision to extend the red line past Harvard Square out to Analy, the decision to, uh, to take down the old L and build the new orange line. Literally, decades of transportation projects <coughs> were shaped by one plan, but that plan is 40 years old, and we have now more or less carried out that plan, and we have not had a new one since 1970, <coughs> and the time has come to, to have that plan and to have that kind of vision, even though it could take a 40-year period mm -hmm. to implement that next plan. Instead, we have broken the state into 13 <coughs> pieces, and they all make tiny little decisions about tiny little projects and tiny little places that eat up what little resources we have. And we really need that. I would, my biggest piece of advice to the governor is you have to find a way even with the system in the, in the financial state it's in, and even with the politics of these 13 metropolitan planning organizations, you have to find a way. And if, if a second term governor who's not running for re-election can't do it, then no one can. Because the, the beauty of being, and I'm sure this has come up in the other classes and will come up next week, <laughs> the beauty of a second term governor who's not running for re-election is you've been there long enough to figure out how the system works, and you can make as many people angry as you as you want to make angry as you because you're not running for re-election. <laughs> so, you know, this is, this is like, this is the last planning document that we came out with. And this is this laundry list of stuff that, you know, does not get us anywhere. That's, we need a new Boston Transportation Plan review. And then the last piece I will leave you with before the break, and I know you talked about the climate change two weeks ago, but it, well, and I didn't have the pleasure of hearing Joe and Jim speak. Transportation is the largest emitter of greenhouse gases and it is the fastest growing. If you look at the blue line at the top of the chart, that is the projected trajectory. We will, we will the transportation sector will single-handedly emit more carbon between now and 2020 than we can reduce from all the building projects that we now have on the books. We do not figure out how to create a 21st century <laughs> transportation system that emits less carbon it will not matter how many buildings we stick solar cells on and put more insulation into. We have to make it work. Um, to their credit, the Patrick administration launched a project called Green DOT uh, during 2010 and said that the Transportation Department's job is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, is to, produce, is to promote walking, biking, and transit, and is to support development. And that is a big deal because most transportation departments would tell you that their job is to move people from point A to point B. So this is not a, you know, a typical set of goals that are established by a transportation department. The challenge for the next four years will to be to put some flesh on the bones of this commitment that is made in the Green DOT. So I'm going to stop there. We'll take our break and then after the break we'll have lots of time to talk about lots of things.